Welcome to another edition of the Survivor's Logbooks. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at the snow globe and the bundle of fireworks. Why these two items specifically? It's me. Starting with the snow globe, it was added in the 0.30.4.0 edition of the beta. This update launched around the 16th of July 2013 and stands as one of the bigger content updates which Coven received in the beta. It is an active item with a 45 second cooldown. Upon activation, it has a 30% chance to freeze any enemy on screen for a whopping 7 to 8 seconds. It's a nice, albeit unreliable item that can alleviate a lot of pressure when the planet is getting crowded. If you're lucky, that is. Active items are often reserved for high damage, so this item never stands as the most powerful, but if the dice rolls have decided to bestow this item upon you, then it can prove itself a saving grace when you truly need it. When coupled with the beating embryo item that doubles the effect of use items, the snow globe gets its snowstorm duration doubled. It's a common notion that not all the items or equipment in this game is of equal strength, but I think the imbalance creates a stronger emotional connection to the items. We get associations of joy and disappointment with specific items that then can make the runs more engaging. It is rewarding to make the most out of items like snow globe and adapt to it all. A lot of the times you can get new use items to replace the one you already have, while other times you are stuck with the first you get. If every use item was reliable damage or crowd control, then would it really matter what item you got? The items stayed the same during the game and received no alterations that are publicly documented. Which is fair as there are no glaring issues with this item. In the world of Risk of Rain, the snow globe does not hold any grand revelations or world building, but it is just a cute little meta joke. The shipping details go on about how someone made their partner a snow globe based on their favorite game. I must admit I find it funny how the one on the receiving end in this log is on an igloo on Neptune. Not sure if they need to get reminded of more snow. Still, it's a really cute gift with a nice sentiment behind it, and stands as a sweet contrast to the other more cynical and bleak shipping logs. A nice little detail is in the contents of the snow globe. If we zoom in on the item, a bit further, and enhance, we see that the inside of the snow globe depicts the commando walking on a round planet. Just like the title screen. Very charming. Moving on to the second item in this season special, we have the Bundle of Fireworks, a very unique item that got added in Risk of Rain's last content update, that being version 1.2.0. With the Bundle of Fireworks, you will now launch 8 fireworks in a burst that all deal a hefty 300% damage each whenever you interact with just about everything. Opening a barrel? Fireworks. Opening a chest? Fireworks. Repairing a drone? Fireworks. Leaving the planet with a body count in the thousands and a mind forever guilt ridden? Fireworks. Stacking the item gives you two more fireworks, and there is no intrinsic limit to how many you can stack, which means you can eventually even put New Year's Eve to shame. This item itself deals a substantial amount of damage to a single target, or meager damage to potentially 8 targets if the stars align. However, as it is only tied to interactable elements in this stage, you cannot say this is exactly consistent damage. There are ways to make the fireworks go off more often, though they are all pricey. Having drones will naturally give you more opportunities to activate the fireworks as when the drones die, you can repair them again to proc the effect. Keep in mind repair costs increase every time, so it is also a nice way to bleed out money. Another method is to utilize the Captain's Brooch active item to spawn new chests with a bloody high price tag. This item does have the single longest cooldown in the game for a news item, so unless you have a secret stash of gold and rapid mitosis, this still won't make for consistent fireworks. If you have a lot of fireworks around the last stage, USC Contact Light, then you should consider picking up some keycards to teleport the contraptions to the final boss arena, so we can use them for damage. My pick would be the Nano Chest, since it doesn't rely on Providence position or your health to maximize value, like with the Gauss Can or the Medbay respectively. No, I think the real strength from this item comes from how it can work like a very effective time saving measure. With how you always have to be on the move in the first risk of rain and there not being any restrictive teleporter zones, there is bound to be a lot of moments where enemies will end up far away from the teleporter. As you have to take down every enemy on the stage to even advance to the next level, there will be a lot of moments where enemies will end up far away and you will have to go through this agonizing journey to even get the chance to take them down. All while the clock keeps ticking and the difficulty keeps rising. A lot of runs can become an uphill struggle because of this. If you have the bundle of fireworks however, you can instead look for remaining chests or better yet a shrine of chance and keep activating it to have the fireworks clean up. 
They have infinite range after all, and you're gaining items while losing less time. It can be quite a saving grace at times, don't underestimate them. When it comes to major changes, there is really only one noteworthy one. It is tied to the explorer's key, and it got nerfed to only release fireworks from 10 chests at the most in the 1.3.0 update. This was done to prevent crashes, though it doesn't say anything about how many fireworks can release from those 10 chests, and as such you can still fill the world with a ludicrous amount of fireworks, if you indeed wish to. Its log shows us that there was a prohibition of residential fireworks up until 2054, specifically the use of it. The reason for the ban was that a group of terrorists disguised homing missiles as fireworks at some point. Not only is this a terrifying concept, but weaponization of fireworks is something we have seen in historic events such as the Mongol siege of Kaifeng. Though far more primitive, the concept remains similar. Something a bit worrying is that the model of fireworks very much act like the ones described to be used by terrorists. Yet the one shipping them insists they are for the kids. How he mentions that he has no idea where his buyer got this from makes it a good thing these never reached their destination. I genuinely do wonder if the sender is feigning ignorance, or if there is some malicious intent here. He does compliment the use of the hidden missiles after all. Before we get to see the fireworks in their full three-dimensional glory, a quick word from our illegal firework transporting sponsor. Glad you stayed. The developers must have realized that they were sitting on something good when they were looking at the bundle of fireworks, as they were included in the very first public early access build of Risk of Rain 2 that released on the 28th of March 2019. The clock has been ticking very fast since then, hasn't it? The item stats remain pretty much the same, still launching 8 fireworks dealing 300% damage whenever you interact with something. But stacking it now gave 4 more fireworks rather than just 2. To unlock this bundle of joy, you had to duplicate the same item 7 times in a row with a 3D printer. Meaning that essentially the entire community unlocked this item without even going for it, as the 3D printers are insipidly addictive. There are however some more changes to the items from its 2D roots. Instead of the fireworks all coming out simultaneously in this burst of pyrotechnics, they now launch one after one from the interactable element, making them a bit slower overall. As such, even a barrel could become a sprouting fountain of fireworks for quite a while if you had enough of the things. Some other things that affected the fireworks indirectly was the changes to the teleporter event. Now that they were restricted to a zone to charge it up and only had to kill the boss to progress, the fireworks' function of cleaning up faraway inhabitants was far less valuable. They still kept their near infinite range, but would explode on contact with any surface. Another thing was that drones would be destroyed forever if they were taken down. You could not repair them. As such, the method of using drones as sources for fireworks was essentially gone. If you found the bundle of fireworks 3D printer, then you could essentially keep activating it to have an endless stream of fireworks. A very weird strategy in multiplayer is to have one player constantly using a 3D printer and act as a makeshift firework turret, while the rest distract the monster and keep the firework dispenser safe. This of course only works if the 3D printer is in a teleporter zone, and the player who did the printing won't exactly have a very versatile build moving forward. It is the sacrifice one must make for comedy. In the patches, the fireworks got no noteworthy changes, which is fitting as it is more of a fun item with a niche use that can still be strong. Its presence alone livens up the item pool. It did get affected by the skills 2.0 patch that reduced the base cost of drones and allowed them to be repaired again after they had been taken down, for a price of course. This revived the strategy of investing into drones if you had a couple of fireworks to make the most out of them, and just like before, it could tank your economy. Use with caution. The hidden drones update did not touch the fireworks, but with how every void capsule is interactable, you did get some mileage out of the colorful deathbringers. It is interesting to see that despite the fact that the bundle of fireworks have never been directly altered, they have still been affected by changes made to elements connected to them. When it comes to the logbook, we got the entry for the bundle of fireworks in the skills 2.0 patch, and it tells a story of what they presume is a couple of some kind that stranded on Petriarch or Wii. One of them gets this bundle of fireworks to celebrate their anniversary, and the log ends with the countdown. Safe to say, it probably backfired heavily. Apart from keeping up the tragic comic nature of the firework log from the first game, it also hints that there were either a lot of fireworks on board, or the canonical survivor from Risk of Rain did not utilize them in their run through the planet. It is an interesting little tidbit, I suppose. 
Normally this would be it, but as Risk of Rain 2 has had the luck of being gifted an active modding community, there has been attempts of bringing over the Risk of Rain 1 items that didn't make the cut into the second game. I want to showcase these attempts as they might give an idea of how these items might have worked in the 3D environment. Of course I will not be taking these into account for lore and patch notes, that would be too much. The mod in question is Think Invis and Chen, with the mod classic items and Chen's classic items as an add-on. Something very neat is that the mod makers have repurposed existing assets for the effects of the legacy items, meaning that they fit more naturally in. The reintroduced snow globe works in a very similar way to Risk of Rain 1. Upon activation it has a chance to randomly freeze enemies for 8 seconds. It even shares the same 45 second cooldown. Its random nature makes it remain a bit unreliable, which I think does not hold as much water given Risk of Rain 2 allows you to shuffle these items far more reliably with equipment chests and equipment shops. It is still useful as stuns can cancel windups for dangerous attacks and it might save you in a pinch. However, the mod maker thinking this did one really subtle but impactful change that made this item far more engaging, interesting and fun. The freeze effect does not just stun like before, but applies the frozen debuff for Mark Depicer Snap Freeze and Ice Bear. As such the frozen enemies have an execution threshold, meaning that this item can now help you take down the plant's inhabitants easier if it freezes the right enemies despite not dealing any damage. I am a huge fan of this change and if Hopa Games ever reintroduces this item, I hope they go with this idea. Now I have covered just about every facet of these two items that there is. Two very distinct items that might be wild cards, but are both quite fun to use, no matter the season. This has been the Survivor's Logbooks, over and out.